it's about pi. And there's been a little bit of song and dance in the, uh, in the media lately because um, a couple of string theorists actually have, uh, have spotted a new way to represent pi. Just for people who don't know, why, why are you happy that they're string theorists? Well, because string theorists is a vest, right? So that's obviously why I'm happy. But it has caused a little You're bit... You're a string theorist. Well, I'm, I'm more of a string phenomenologist. So there's somewhere in between string theory and cosmology. But um, no, the, reason, the reason, I mean, it, it's caused a bit of a song and dance on, on, on the internet. And the reason is, it's just, it's the old story when anybody does something that gets a little bit of publicity, there's always a load of people that just want to moan and whine about it and say, oh, it's not that interesting. These, these two Indian string theorists, uh, Sinya and Sahar, they found a way, a new way, to, and it does look like it is a new way to represent pi. So what do I mean by that? So, you know, we all know what pi is. It's, it's the, you know, the ratio of a, a circumference of a circle to, to its diameter. But, you know, how are you going to calculate pi? How, how do you represent it? So one way you might do that is with a, what's called a, like a, a sort of series expansion. So, so what does that mean? It's just like a, a sum, an infinite sum. And sort of if you truncate that sum, you get approximations to pi. And if you, you know, the, the further along the line that you truncate it, the better the approximation you get to pi. So they've come up with a new way to represent pi using basically a series expansion in this way, using an infinite sum. So the story of, of trying to represent pi with these series goes all the way back to another Indian in the sort of, around this sort of late 14th, early 15th century, an Indian called Madhava, who was in Kerala. In fact, he founded the Kerala school. And what he did, he came up with this really simple uh, representation for pi. Actually, it's for pi by four, but that doesn't matter. So pi by four, he noticed that pi by four was basically one minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh and so on. So you can sort of imagine this alternating series where, where you, you know, sort of, of, of uh, fractions, you know, these odd fractions. So this, this is due to Madhava, and you can see that if I, you know, if I truncate this at any point, I'll get an approximation to pi. If I truncate it a bit later, I'll get a better approximation. This is sometimes sort of um, attributed to Leibniz, actually, but that came later. This, this, it, Madhava was the, the first to, to come up with this. So actually, one of the cool things about uh, how Madhava represented this, he didn't write it down like this. You know, this is not how he wrote it down. He actually wrote it in verse. So I can read you the verse as he wrote it. So can I read it? Yeah, go on. <laughs> right. He said, it's not very catchy, uh, the diameter multiplied by four and divided by unity is found and stored. Again, the products of the, di the diameter and four are divided by the odd numbers like three, five, and so on. And the results are subtracted and added in order to the earlier stored result. <laughs> so you make it that what you will. It's that, <laughs> okay? So of course there have been other people that have come up for the with their you know series expansions for pi. Of course, another Indian, and I'm sure you can guess who it is. Ramanujan. Of course, it was Ramanujan. He came up with loads actually. I think I think he came up with seventeen, but but don't quote me on that number. Uh, let me just give you one of his. Ramanujan's uh, one was actually for 1 over pi, but you know, you can use this. And it goes like 2 times the square root of 2 over 99 squared sum over k equals 0 up to infinity for k factorial, k factorial to the fourth, 2, 6, 3, 9, 0, k. It's 1103 over 396 to the 4k. So this is, this is an, an expression that Ramanujan came up with to approximate pi. So if you can imagine you truncated this sum, say, at, at uh, the hundredth value in the sum, then that would give, and then calculate it, you would get an approximation for pi. The higher and higher you go in the sum, the better the approximation. And I said, Ramanujan came up with a bunch of these. And actually this, this one of Ramanujan's here, is, you know, it it's a gives you much better approximations than this original one by, by Madhavan. So we can illustrate this. So, um, so here we have a little bit of computer code that I wrote. Computer knows pi to 100 decimal places, the way I've set it up, okay? And I'm gonna try and see how well these approximations do. Okay, so I've put in here the Madhava series. That's the, the poem. Yes, the poem, yes, yes, yes. And I've put in Ramanujan's. There are a few others in there as well, which I'll, we'll come back to in a minute. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first four terms in the Madhava series, just the first four, um, and yeah, and I'll get to within, you know, 0.198 of pi. So it's not super accurate, but it's not terrible. If I go a bit higher in, if I take the 
get, take the first five terms, it goes to within 0.16. If I take the first six, it gets a bit closer, 0.14, and so on. So I'm zooming in on the number a little bit. Where what did you put 100 terms in? Well, I put 100 for the Dava series. Yeah. Okay, I get to within whatever that is, 0.0099. No. So close. Close, but, let, but look, let's compare this to Ramanujan. Okay, yeah. so, so for four terms, Madhava gets within point, point 0.2, basically. Four terms, Ramanujan, check that out, gets within 10 to the minus 40. Ramanujan's, this, this Ramanujan series, just four terms, and within 10 to the minus 40 of, of pi. It's incredible, right? So Ramanujan's kicking ass there, okay? But Ramanujan's isn't actually the state of the art. Since 1998, we've had a better one, who's due to uh, Chudnovsky. Okay, and that's, a, again, a, a more complicated formula, but super rapidly converging. I'll write that one down for you. Yeah. Again, it's for 1 over pi. Okay, and this one goes like 12. The sum from k equals 0 up to infinity, minus 1 to the k, 6k factorial. Okay, this is getting ridiculous now. 5, 4, 5, 1, 4, 0, 1, 3, 4 times k plus 1, 3, 5, 9, 1, 4, 0, 9, divided by 3k factorial, k factorial cubed, and then 6, 4, 0, 3, 2, 0 to the 3k plus 3 over 2. Okay, so this is the Chugnoski formula, okay? Do I even want to ask where these come from? Is that too, is that too complicated a question? Like... Yeah, so, I, I, so I'll be honest, I haven't looked into that. What I can say is, is, that, is that the Chugnoski formula is based on Ramanujan's insights. Because this is an example of something called a Ramanujan Sato formula. You can sort of see the structure. It's not, it's not completely dissimilar, you see. So, so the, the, it is, this is kind of a derivative of this in some sense. Does it have anything to do with circles? Again, I don't know. I think, no, I don't think so. So, so yeah, so this is a Chomnosky formula. This is the one, this is state of the art. This is the one they're using now when they're trying to calculate pi to loads and loads of decimal places when somebody's computer scientist does this on a supercomputer. So recently they set a, a record for this. They calculated pi to 105 trillion decimal places and they were using the Chugnoski formula to do that. Ended in a six. The last one was a six, by the way, the last digit. Good to know. But just... We go back to my, my, I mean, my little computer code. I'm not going to go to 105 trillion decimal places, but we can see how powerful Chudnovsky formula is. Yeah. Okay. So again, taking remember, we took the first four terms for Madava, we got to within about 0.2 of pi for Ramanujan, we got massively into 10 to the minus 40. Incredible. Chudnovsky, just check this out. Within 10 to the minus 71, with just four terms, it's incredibly rapidly converging. That's why they're using that, right? So, <laughs> to our new representation of, uh, of pi. Um, gonna need another piece of paper, Brady. <laughs> the new representation of pi from Sinya and, and, and Saha. Now, they actually had a really lovely way of expressing this, actually, which I really like. So they say, if pi is the meal, then the series is the recipe. And I kind of like that because it basically says what it does, right? It says you use the recipe to figure out what pi is. You use the series to figure out what pi is. So what was their, their series? Pi is equal to 4. I have a little 4 there. So from n equals 1 up to infinity. 1 over n factorial. 1 over n plus lambda. Minus 4 over 2n plus 1. And then we have this thing. 2 n plus 1 squared over 4 n plus lambda minus n n minus 1. Okay, this is their formula. There's a few things we're probably going to have to explain. What's, what's this thing here? This is something called a, a posh hammer symbol. It's basically a bit like a gamma function, a bit like a factorial, but you don't include all the bottom n. So, you know, specifically, if we write out what it is, if we want to write out what sort of um, a of n is, that would be a, a plus 1, that's it, a, all the way up to a plus n minus 1. But it's just, it's just, a, it just means that, okay? That little subscript thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, now, what you'll notice about this, by the way, there's something quite interesting about it. 
So we've got pi on this side, we've got this sum over various n's, so we, you know, we put in n equals 1, we get one contribution, we put n equals 2, we get another contribution, and so on, and we add them all up, right? But these have got this lambda sitting in here. So what is lambda? Well, literally, pretty much lambda can be pretty much anything, as long as it converges. And so you can have lots of, this is actually an infinite number of different series for different choices of lambda, but they all give pi, right? So this is quite interesting. They've actually, not only have they found one representation, they've actually found an infinite number here. What values of lambda could you try? Well, lambda is infinity. So you may take really big values of lambda. You start to end up with the Madava series. So this is like a, a generalization of the Madava series. But for different values of lambda, this series will converge much more rapidly to pi. Smaller values. Actually, yeah, yeah, smaller values. Yeah, lambda's infinity will give you back Madava. Different values of lambda will, will give you a, a more rapidly converging uh, sort of representation of pi. But it's not smaller the better. No, it doesn't work. As, I can show you actually. So, um, so I plotted a, a little graph of how much it differs from pi as a function of lambda for the first, if you take just four terms. So we're just going to take four terms, right? And we're going to compute the first, yeah, the first four contributions from here, sum them up um, for different values of lambda, okay? And so here's what we get and compare it to pi, right? So, so we, want, we want to be as close to pi as possible. So you can see that around here where lambda is sort of down by this end here, the difference is pretty small, right? But as you make lambda big, the difference gets worse and it starts to produce, you know, approach the value given by, um, by the Madava series. So it's, it's, it's not like it's, it's just always the smaller the better, it, it, it moves around a little bit. Are um, there, so what is, what's, there, there must be an optimal one where it hits the line there. Yeah, or? so I, I think that's going to depend on, on where you truncate the series as well. I don't know if that's, there's a universal result there. They don't, they don't discuss this, but I think, uh, I think that, will, that will depend on where you truncate the series. But it looks like, can you show me that again? It, look, it looks like we're looking, for, for the first four at least, we're looking between, what, 0 and 10? Yeah, I would say so. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, and of course you can also go to negative values as well, by the way. Um, that's possible. So you're allowed to do that. But here's a few. I've plotted a few. So here's for, for lambda equals three, um, you get within 0.001 of, of, of pi. If you go to a big value of lambda, like a million, then you're back with the Madava series. So it's within 0.2 roughly. So it's sort of, it, 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 there's not a universal rule. It's sort of like the, the, the rate at which it converges can, can move about a little bit. None of them are like knockouts like the current state of the art though, are they? No, so that's the point. It, it doesn't look like any of them. Any choice of lambda is really giving you anything that's remotely competing with Chudnovsky. But to be fair to the authors of the paper, they don't say it will. They just said it's better than Madava, which it is. OK, so you know, they've had a bit of criticism for this, but actually they never claim to do better than Chevnosky. It's just it's just as better than Madava, which it does. Nowhere did we make the claim that we are going to revolutionize the field of mathematics. And so some of the reports said that uh, the formula is going to revolutionize mathematics. I mean, we never made any such claims. And uh, so if somebody else makes that, those kind of claims on our behalf, we uh, look like uh, idiots uh, in front of our colleagues. And the paper isn't even about this, <laughs> OK? <laughs> this is the important thing to remember. The paper's got nothing to do. It, this is just a little quirky aside that they stumbled across. The paper's about string theory, OK? So should we tell you what the paper's actually about? Tony's explanation of the physics can be found in a separate video over on our Number File 2 channel. We've also got an extended interview with the two authors themselves, Arnab Sahar and Aninda Sinha, who are based at the Indian Institute of Science over in Bangalore. If you want to watch any of that, there'll be links in the description. I'll also put a link to my physics channel 60 Symbols. Have you ever seen 60 Symbols? It features Tony on a pretty regular basis along with a host of other scientists. Lots of stuff about physics, particles, space, all that good stuff. So that's how this story centered around Pi originated. I mean, that I don't think it would have actually occurred to either of us to actually try to uh, uh, sell to the layperson that, look, we have found a new formula for Pi. I'm going to drop it down. That's levitating. That's just diamagnetism.